In this episode, we'll learn how to turn yourself into the Joker Clown in Photoshop. Welcome to Take Action, the show where we take your favorite Photoshop effects and show you how to do them in just a few seconds using the Actions panel. If you'd like to follow along, I have left a download link in the video description. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do for this action is to make sure that our workspace is set up correctly. When you have your image open in Photoshop, you want to make sure your background layer is in its original state. If your layer looks something like this, then go to Layer, New, Background from Layer, and that should fix the issue. Next, select the three lines beside the Layers panel, select Panel Options, and make sure Add Copy to Copied Layers and Groups is selected. Select OK, then go to Image, Mode. In here, make sure your workspace is set to RGB color with eight bits. And finally, select Image Size and make sure that your width is at least 2500 pixels. With all of that out of the way, we can begin the installation of the action. You will need to extract with a program like WinRAR and you should see files for brushes, patterns and an action file. In Photoshop, go to File, Open, and then individually open each of the files. I will start with the brushes. You won't see any changes on the screen, but that's now installed in the background, so I'll just do that for the pattern and action file. Now that our installation is complete, we can go to Window, Actions. In this panel, we can locate the folder labeled Clown. Open it once. And this is the subfolder that we'll play shortly. But before that, let's create a new layer. Name it brush in lowercase. Now with this layer selected, use a red brush to paint over the areas you like to convert into a clown. In this case, it's easier to make a selection first, then fill it in. So I'll select the background layer, find a quick selection tool, and then select select subject at the top and Photoshop will identify the man in this image. I can use the brush to fill in areas that are missing. And once I'm happy with it, select the brush layer, select the paint bucket tool, and fill in the selection with red. Go to select, deselect. That's our selection complete. And now we can press the play button to run the action. You will see a message pop up stating that you should paint with your brush on the subject's eyes. Now use the brush to paint on this area, just don't change the hardness of the brush as it's intended this way. And once you're happy, press the play button again. A pop-up message will appear again. This time you want to paint on the irises. Press stop. I will once again paint with my brush. And once I'm satisfied, press the play button. The following pop-up message instructs you to paint on the subject's hair. Press stop, paint with your brush, and then press the play button again. The next pop-up will instruct you to select the texture file that came with the action. So go ahead and do that. Once this new window opens, press the stop button. Hold control and left click on your mouse to drag this clown face into your main composition. Now go to Edit, Free Transform and scale this down in proportion to your subject's face. Once you have a rough idea, reduce the opacity of the texture in the layers panel so that we can fit it correctly. And don't forget to scale it in width and height by using Edit, Free Transform until the eye level matches. Then select the Texture Layer Mask Thumbnail and use a black brush to paint out the edges using X on your keyboard to toggle to white in case you make a mistake. And now we can press the play button to run the action. The action panel will now perform all of the effects in order. And once it's complete, you'll see a pretty cool effect in front of you. Now in the layers panel, scroll up until you see the clown folder, open it, 
and then hold Ctrl and Alt together and close the folder. Let go of Ctrl and Alt and open the folder again. You should see that all the folders have now collapsed and you can easily find what you're looking for. I will go into the nose folder and hide it since I think it looks like a potato. Then I will fix the shadow underneath it by going to the face folder and painting on the layer mask. I can also do things like changing the colour of his hair from the adjustment panel located in the hair folder. And I can also reduce the opacity of the eye marks to about 70%. Of course there's plenty of other adjustments we can do to this design but I think it looks pretty good. So we'll leave it at that. And this was Design Dummy.